Up next on BU Terriers All Access, the team travels to the Big Apple for a red-hot hockey matchup with Cornell. We go behind the bench with former NHL star, BU alum, and assistant coach Scott Young, and we'll profile last year's Beanpot MVP and team captain, Matt Grizzly, on this edition of BU Terriers All Access. It's the day after Thanksgiving at Aganis Arena, but it's not just another practice day for the Boston University Terriers. No, this Black Friday is a travel day for the boys from Boston. They're headed to New York City in the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, for a Saturday night showdown with the Big Red of Cornell. It's called Red Hot Hockey, and this game only happens once every two years when BU and Cornell face each other at the Garden. The winner takes home the prized Kelly Harkness Cup and some serious bragging rights. Upon arriving in the Big Apple, there's some time to get settled then a chance for the team to take in the sights on what is definitely the coolest road trip of the season. As the sun rises over New York City, it's game day for the BU Terriers. And, as usual, there will be a morning skate for the team. I'm liking it. I mean, I'm lucky I live right across the park and I found this. But today's skate is anything but usual. First, it will be outside. And second, the team will be skating with the kids from the Ice Hockey in Harlem program. This is a real special experience uh, for our players, for our coaches, and for the kids of the Ice Hockey in Harlem program. This is just wonderful to, to be here. This is the second time we've taken part in this, and you can really see the faces, both of our kids and of their kids, when we walk into this, into this pavilion. You can just see how, how happy everybody is to be here. Oh, you're fast. All right, here we go. Go in and rip it. This is such a tremendous thing that will really benefit and impact our kids well into the future. The opportunity to skate with members of the BU team, um, to talk to them, interact with them, you know, really gives them you know, a new set of role models who they can sort of pattern who they, uh, who they play as and also just thinking about their post-secondary educational opportunities because you know, ice hockey in Harlem is really about not just our students playing hockey but graduating high school and going on to college and they've got plenty of role models in the men's team here today. It's no surprise that giving back to the community is an important part of what BU hockey is all about. What's surprising is just how fun it can be. Go on right down, right down this way, stretch it, all right? Send you up. Woo! Uh, it's awesome, you know, it's like, uh, we kind of use it as our pregame skate, I guess, and just, you know, give these guys a couple pointers and have fun with them and I guess, uh, you know, spread our, our hockey culture to this area. It feels good, you know, whenever you give back, it feels good. To the house, to the house! Well, it's an incredible experience for our guys. I'm hoping that everyone here is enjoying our guys being there because I know they're having probably more fun than the kids are. So we did this two years ago. It was an incredible experience for our players and this is uh, just a great way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Along with all the hockey fun, there's also time with BU alum and 1980 Olympic hero, Mike Ruzioni, plus some important words from the head coach. And there are a lot of teams that have a lot of talent that can't be successful. That's the same thing in life. You may have talent in life, but you've got to be a team player, you've got to work hard, you've got to make sure that you're mentally tough, you've got to handle adversity and you've got to handle disappointment well, you can't get down on yourself, you've got to remain positive. Hey, All right. 
Good work. Coming up next, Charlestown Mass native and Boston Bruins draft pick Matt Grizzlick talks about being a captain, a senior, and playing for the Terriers. Everyone's situation is different. Um, you know, for me, college was, was a better route, I think. When I took my visit there, I just knew it was a school. I, I really loved the facilities there. I liked the coaches, the guys, and uh, it just seemed like a good fit for me. Miedo goes to the net, carries it all the way, and he scores! I was young when I went there, you know, as a true freshman, so I was playing against bigger guys, stronger guys than I was. Kept in by Clendenning, rebound, score! Matt Nieto buries it, his 15th of the season. I wouldn't be where I am without the, without the development and, you know, the work that the coaches gave for me, and um, I couldn't be happier with the decision that I made, and um, it's always nice having that uh, education to fall back on just in case things don't work out. I knew that I really wanted to play hockey from a really young age. My dad worked at the Garden. He's worked there for about 45 years now. And um, just growing up and living right across the street kind of developed my love for the game. For talented local players, there are lots of great collegiate hockey options in greater Boston. But for Matt Grizzlick, there was really only one. I was recruited here in my freshman year of high school at Belmont Hill. and. Coach Parker took me for a couple hours, which I wasn't really expecting. He really took a lot of time out of his day to uh, show me the campus. I think that was huge for me to see and it was really eye-popping and um, I was attracted as soon as I stepped foot on campus here. We want it more than these guys, let's go! Playing in front of uh, you know the alumni and the people who have played here before is such a rich tradition to be you. Um, just makes you really want to put on that sweater. You know, you're going out there, start of the game, and you hear the band playing. You know, I have a lot of pride with you going on the ice, and uh, it's something you try not to take for granted. From a player's standpoint, he's an elite skater. He's incredibly competitive and tough. Uh, shoots the puck extremely well. There's really not a lot he can't do. Keep being physical back here. Set the tone. Entering his junior season, Grizzlick was given one of the highest honors in hockey, being named captain by his teammates. Wasn't really sure how to take it. Uh, being a junior was still seniors on the team a year before me, but those guys really took me under my wing and just allowed me to um, accept that leadership role in the first place. You want to follow someone who leads by example, he's the guy to follow. I mean, he's incredibly dedicated. No one's more competitive in practice than that. You know, I'm not the most talkative guy in the room. I think a lot of te my teammates would uh, say that, but you know, if you can continue to just act the right way and uh, you know, say the right things, then I think your teammates will take notice of that. Last year was a big reason why we played with the swagger that we did, because Matt was a very confident player. What drives me is just my compete level. Uh, I try to compete in all facets of the game, join the rush offensively when I can. You know, you need to know you're good. And Matt knows he's good, but in a very respectful way. Buck squirts loose, Rodriguez to Grizzlick, score! Matt Grizzlick rips it home of the BU Terriers, grab their 30th Bean Pot Championship. You know, probably my best moment in hockey. Um, you know, growing up as a kid in Boston, you know, it's a dream to come to a Bean Pot school in general and um, to have the privilege to come to BU, a school that's uh, you know had the number of one in 29 uh, bean pots up until that point. It was just great to be a part of. The most valuable player, Matt Grizzly. Being MVP is obviously a high point for a kid from Boston. In fact, the only thing that might top that is being drafted by the hometown Bruins. When I heard my name called, I just kind of went black and I don't really remember too much of the day. Going down there and getting able to shake uh, Cam Neely and uh, Peter Shirley's hand at the time. And it was just really crazy to be able to uh, have the spoke to be on your chest. Obviously, it'd be nice to uh, throw on the Bruins sweater if I could. That'd be great. Uh, it'd be a huge honor for me and, and my family just being a kid from Boston and getting to share that dream. You know, I'm really grateful for that. So hopefully I can uh, continue to work hard and get to that level. Despite the tantalizing prospect of playing pro hockey in the Bruins organization, Matt made the very big decision to finish his education at Boston University. 
I just really wanted to finish my education. I felt like, uh, you know, it was an obligation to my family and the school. You know, hockey can only last forever, so um, you got to make sure you build the right foundation for your life going forward. Okay. Drive deep, give them an outlet down low, right? When we come back, BU assistant coach Scott Young talks about his time as a player for the Terriers, life in the NHL, and his role behind the bench. Stay with us. At the point, they'll go back and forth with it. Wind up, shot, deflected, score! Point shot goes in, and Boston University is your Division I champion. Four, three. away from Terrian, scores! Unbelievable! BU assistant coach Scott Young has had a long and storied hockey career, but if it wasn't for a chance meeting with a hockey legend, the Clinton, Massachusetts native might never have played at all. My family wasn't into hockey. My dad was actually uh, in Hudson having a beer with Tommy Williams in a bar, and Tommy Williams, I think he was the first uh, U.S. born player taken in the draft asked uh, how old's your son and he, he told Tommy he's five years old and he said why don't you get him on ice get him to learn to skate signed up for a learn to skate program that's kind of all history from there I was a uh, member of the Bobby Orr fan club I got uh, mail from Bobby Orr and I had my card my membership card and everything so I, I was a big Bruins fan growing up I played my first world junior championship in Finland I was a, a senior in high school at St. Mark's and then it kind of went forward from there with the Olympics in 88 and uh, some world, world championships and a couple more Olympics. So it was a tremendous experience all around to, to what the world of hockey was all about. I had played with David Quinn and Clark Donatelli on a, on a summer uh, team in Hockey Night in Boston. Heavily scouted, it was the best tournament around when I was growing up. And probably the most underrated player that New England has ever produced. I mean, could do it all. Could skate, could pass, could shoot, was physical, strong. I had met with BC, I had, you know, I'd traveled to Providence, went to UNH, looked at a number of schools. Really, the, the, the big decision was when I sat down with, with Jack Parker and knowing that this is the guy that I want to play for. We won two bean pots, which was tremendous. Uh, the first year we won the Hockey East Championship. Jack did a tremendous job preparing his teams for the big games, and we always seem to win those. You know, those are the things that I'll remember. If you're going to play in the NHL, uh, if you're an NHL type of player, we're going to help you prepare. I wasn't thinking about getting drafted. That wasn't what drove me. What drove me was doing the best that I could do here for the, the BU Terriers and trying to win games with the BU Terriers. There's Scott Young at center with Colorado. Scott played two seasons at BU before moving on in 1988 to the U.S. Olympic team and then the NHL's Hartford Whalers en route to a stellar professional career. When you have a guy who uh, played 17 years in the league and won Stanley Cups and Olympic medals, you know, he gets instant uh, respect from the players and they understand that he's speaking from experience. The Pittsburgh one was, uh, was really a, a great learning experience for me. From that cup forward, I felt like it changed my whole outlook on the NHL and I said to myself if I want to stay in this league for a long time I've got to train harder and that changed uh, a lot of things for me and I felt like I became a better player and become a true professional and then winning the, the, the Stanley Cup in Colorado was a I played a bigger role on that team the first one was a real learning experience for me and the second one was just uh, I, I wanted that so bad and it was just a, a tremendous feeling the high you get from it, it's, it's, it's tough to describe, but it's always something that can never be taken away from you. In 2014, Scott's career came full circle when he returned to BU, rejoining his former Terrier teammate, David Quinn. You know, when you look at Scott Young and you look at the way he carries himself and the presence he has and what he has done in the hockey world, I think, we're, like I said, we're very fortunate to have him here, and, and nobody's more fortunate than our players to have him here. Obviously, this rink and this facility and uh, how important it is to the school, and I just wanted to be around it. When you, when you love what you're doing, good things happen, and, and I've, I've loved it all along. You grew up, you know, in, in the Boston area, and you, you watch the Bruins, you know, it's a little different being a, 
be on another team, but it's pretty special, you know, I get a lot of family here, and just cool to come back near your hometown and, and play, and it was a dream of mine to come play at BU. That's all I've ever wanted to do, and I had a cousin, Tony Monti, who played at BU, and always wanted to kind of follow in his footsteps. I was just more of a BU guy. I played for the Boston Junior Terriers when I was younger. Coach Parker, he was, he was great, and the whole facility here is, is, is a, one of the big reasons why you know I came here and wanted to come here. Just a great place to play hockey and, and, and go to school and just be a part of this community. Up next, it's game time at the Garden. BU versus Cornell. Red Hot Hockey is next. Drop the puck. Saturday night, BU versus Cornell, Madison Square Garden. It's hockey night in Manhattan, and the Kelly Harkness Cup is on the line. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena, where memorable moments in sports, music, and entertainment have happened every day for more than 130 years. You just need to play well within your ship. Let's continue to elevate the energy from now to the puck drop, right? We're playing hard, we're playing on the edge. A once in a lifetime opportunity. Support each other, trust each other. We need a big win tonight, outwork them. Control your emotions, it's gonna be a great crowd. Play fast, play physical. Win on three, one, two, three, win! Tonight, Madison Square Garden proudly presents Red Hot Hockey, featuring the Cornell Big Red against the Terriers of Boston University. Come on, boys! Let's go, boys. Have fun here. Right away, Bill! Hey. Try that again. That's it, Greer. Better wait, Coover. Keep going, buddy. Yeah! Hey, be around the world. Yates trying to center it, but Coover couldn't smother it. Wrap around a tip, puck loose, and a goal, Yates. Midway through the second, Cornell takes a 2 to nothing lead. BU answers by raising their intensity. Hey, reverse, reverse. But can't crack the big red. Time is starting to run out. We're down 2 nothing every third period. Come to New York City to play one game. Should be balls to the wall for all 60 minutes. And we got to get back in here and play 20 more behind two goals. Better stay deep because we're not losing this game. You don't need to get three goals in the first shift. You need to get the next goal by doing the right things over and over again. Fortunately, we've been in this position plenty of times, yeah, but you can't think of that. You're going to think about having your next best shift and continue to pressure them. Stay positive, support each other, trust each other, play as a team, and let's go get the next goal here, boys, all right? That's it, boys. Stay on them. Stay on them, boys. Greer finds Olsen. Olsen is offside over the line. Goes to the middle to Greer. Oh, to yeah! What a goal! Yeah, baby! Woo! Nice play, baby! What a play, what a play! Olsen inside the zone. Went to the Olsen. Net. They know he covered him. Greer. Oh! He's still in the goal! Yeah! AJ Greer! Yeah, baby! Let's go, boys! Let's go! Deals it off. Gets it back, McCarron with a drop, leads ahead for the goal. Come on, boys, all over him, let's go. Bear down. Hey, bear down. Hey, I'm coming right to you guys in the breakout. Wait, maneuvering for a shot, had it blocked. Puck is down low, puck to the front of the cage, shot in front, puck oh, goes to the goal! Yeah! Yeah! Yes! Back and forth they go, and it's three to three at the end of regulation. Time for a winner take all sudden death overtime. There you go, left. The 
Despite a number of great chances, Cornell holds on to force the shootout. The Kelly Harkness Cup hangs in the balance. answer now is Timo Tiedemann. Here comes Tiedemann. Tiedemann. And he scores. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move into a sudden death situation. First shooter for Boston University, number 21, Matt Lane. Yeah! It's a baby! Oh! Boston University alternate captains Matt Lane and Danny O'Regan, you may claim the Kelly Harkness Trophy. We already got a text from Mark Kelly, Jack Kelly's son, thanking us for keeping it in the family. And it means an awful lot to his family, but it means an awful lot to be alive. And there's not many programs in the history of college hockey that have the, uh, have the history that we do and have the, uh, have the impact on college hockey that we do. It's got to be a team effort if we're going to win hockey games. It's got to be a team effort, and we certainly were a team tonight. But congratulations on winning and keeping the Kelly Harkness Trophy. Boston University holds on to the Kelly Harkness Cup for two more years. Good times in the Big Apple. But the season continues. Be sure to join us for all the action next time on BU Terriers All Access. Thanks for watching.